Yes, that is the topic today, AI in UI UX design. So today I'm gonna to show you the different ways that I personally use generative AI in order to assist and enhance my UI design workflow. So we're gonna take a look at Midjourney and we're also going to take a look at Adobe Illustrator's Firefly for generating true vector assets as well. So there's no challenge in this particular video. Tomorrow we're going to move on to a new topic called embellishments and you'll see what that's all about. And then we're going to introduce a kind of like a more challenging project here in the coming day. So be sure to watch the whole playlist of the 30 days UI UX because I'm uploading 30 videos in 30 days. I think today's number 18 or 19 or something like that. And so we've still got quite a bit left to go. So hopefully you're enjoying it. And if you are, subscribe, check out designcourse.com and I'll shut up, let's get started. All right, so this is our design and I'm not gonna touch a single element here. I'm only going to create a website background and then have another graphic right here. And it's really gonna make all of this come together. Um, so basically, the first thing I wanna do is hop into Discord, which is a free chat application for those of you who are not familiar. And this is how you interact and interface with Midjourney, which is an AI image generation tool where you can issue prompts via right down here in Discord and it will spit out some results for you. So um, I'll scroll up. I, I use this often for a lot of different contexts. Um, you can see it can do some really cool things like mean skull vector illustration. These are just AI image generated. It would take a long time to, to do this or, or to hire somebody to do this for you. Um, so you could do a lot of vector stuff, a lot of realistic stuff as well. Here's some UI stuff I was doing for the course earlier. You may recognize this right here from one of the assets that I did. This is called Elegant Fragrance Bottle, dark background, purple potion inside, octane render. So you could do a lot of really, really cool stuff. And so let's say you want a website background pattern. So I issued this prompt right here website background pattern, AR 16 by nine, that means aspect resolution, because otherwise you get square one by one. And since this is for a desktop resolution um, website, then I specified this flag right here, AR 16 by nine. So you might be wondering how exactly do you issue prompts? Well, basically you need to sign up to Midjourney. They give you a free account, you get free credits. And then if you want to use it often, then you pay like a small monthly fee. And you, Basically, the way you issue a prompt is if I zoom up, you type in forward slash imagine, hit enter, and then the prompt, and that's it. So like uh, I could say um, website background pattern, checkerboard, um, black and I don't know, red. <laughs> we'll see what it comes up. It doesn't always give you what you want. Um, so we'll see what that does. And typically this takes about 30 to 40, 50 seconds or so. It does not take long at all. And you'll get a different result every time too. So like here's another instance where I just typed in website background pattern a few minutes ago and it gave me four different results as compared to when I did it yesterday when I was preparing this tutorial and it gave me these four results, completely different results. All right. So we'll see what this is coming up here. Oh, actually, so initially it shows you results that are pretty, you know, pixelated and stuff, but real quickly it improves. So what did I say? Black and red. Yeah, these are all black and red checkerboard patterns. So very, very cool stuff. Now there was one that I liked for that my particular design and it was um, this one right here in the lower right corner. So if you find one that you like, all you have to do is look at the buttons beneath. You'll see it says U1234, 1234V. Up res or upscale, that's meaning like it'll give you a higher res quality. And then variations. So if you want variations of this, you can click variations button. You'll get four variations based on this one. This little refresh icons means it will just rerun the prompt from scratch and you'll get different results. So this one I liked, you can see it right here. Um, I kind of wanted it to be not as large like these checkerboards. So you can actually zoom out by clicking the zoom out 2X or 1.5X button. And that gives you these results. You can see they're smaller. And I like number three, so I specified U3 and I got this image right here. So what I could do is if I just uh, screenshot this and copy this and I go back into Figma, where are you Figma? There you are. And I just paste this in there. 
scale this up, align it to the top, hit my left bracket key, there you go. We just made our design look way more interesting by having this pretty cool background pattern. And if I hide this, you'll see what the original looked like versus this. It gives it texture. It's an embellishment, essentially, which we'll be talking about in the next lesson, embellishments. Um, and so I think this looks real cool. You could go with this as is. You can see it kind of gets cut off at the bottom. It's barely noticeable because it's not quite black like here. Um, I just wanted to show you though, if you wanted to modify this, this is a real cool technique that you can, you can use on your own projects. If you have Photoshop, and I believe there's a, a few Photoshop uh, clones, so to speak, that are basically free to use and browser-based. I forget the name of it, but it should do a lot of the same stuff if you don't have pho Photoshop. Maybe somebody in the comments can mention what that's called and link to it. But let's say, for instance, you wanted to kind of seamlessly integrate with the rest of the page. So essentially what you could do is let me go to File New, paste this in, go to Image canvas size and I want to give myself some more height so I'm going to click this up and then the height is 681 so let's do like 900 all right so now it gives us this orange background because that's my current background color and um, just to stay, take a quick step back um, if I show you the actual UI back in, there we go, Figma, you'll see this empty space here and I wanna have some sort of graphic of sorts. And this is gonna be like a travel agency website. So maybe one that like uh, takes people to like, you know, ancient web, ancient sites with statues and stuff. Well, I use Midjourney to um, create a statue, isometric statue. So let me show you real quick, right here. So isometric statue of a man, and it came up with these four things. And my goal is to create one that has a transparent background, an object that I can cut out. I like this first one. So I hit up res one right there, and then I zoomed out. And after zooming out enough, I actually got the full thing in view right here. Okay, so what I did is just take this, just copy it just like I did before, paste it into Photoshop and right here. And then you can use this really cool tool called object selection tool right up here. And then you could literally just hover over an object or multiple or just left click and drag and it will isolate it for you. You can copy it, create a new document, paste it in and there you go. You have a transparent background with that asset. Very, 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 very cool. The reason I decided to show you this before continuing on with the other one is because it's a specific color scheme. And so the color scheme that I wanted to use, um, if I use the eyedropper tool, is right here. Oh no, it's showing up, up off the other side of my monitor, I can't see it. But it's this color right there that I'm hovering over. And so if I go back here, wait, nope, it's this one and I paste, or I just I use the paint bucket tool way down here, I can make that the bottom color. And then my goal is to kind of create a transition. Instead of just having a flat, hard line here, we can kind of like use different Photoshop brushes to, to do something interesting with it. Um, so if I take this and then I create a layer on top, I can, ooh, that's way too large. Let's uh, reduce that a bit. We could create kind of like a grunge effect. And then we could also use this other brush. And by the way, these Photoshop brushes, if you go to Google and type free Photoshop brushes, you're gonna find a million of them and you can learn how to install them and then use them. And what's cool, this is a pattern brush. Like just take, take a look at how cool that is. It creates this nice cool little pattern. And you can be able to do interesting stuff like this in order to blend different sections of a website together. So the one that um, I came up with, um, actually, I, it's not saved. Darn it. It was actually right here. I wonder if I can go edit, redo, control. Uh, let's say redo. It's control shift Z. Okay. Here's what I came up with. So control shift Z. There we go. This is basically what I came up with. So what you do is then just edit, copy, merge to copy all the layers. And if I go back to Figma and I delete this or just keep it and just paste over it. 
Oh no, is it not working? Let me go back here, edit copy merged. There we go. Okay, so what I would do is scroll to, is, is push this down, sort this to the bottom and give it the same color here. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Very, very, very cool. Just to show you the workflow, I know that took a little bit of time and a little bit annoying, but that is I, just an aesthetic that you can apply that would work very well. And so then we could take that statue graphic, which is here in Photoshop, and just, um, here's the thing, you cannot copy and paste in, a, in something with a transparent background, because here's what happens. It, it copies the white with it, unfortunately. So you wanna be able to save that first as a PNG file. And unfortunately, the model modal for doing that is coming up on my other monitor. So I did save it elsewhere. Um, let me move this into, oh, this is so frustratingly annoying. Let me move this into, into view. Ah, there it is, man, right there. So if I take man and just kind of throw it in here randomly and scale it down just a bit, maybe get it rotated slightly. We now have a really cool graphic that kind of fits the color scheme down here um, and the overall theme. So two pieces of art essentially that are generated by AI that I've been able to modify and enhance in Photoshop and then utilize right here um, a transparent, you know, very cool kind of like polygonal vector-ish sort of asset, which is just so fun. Um, so. Another thing I real quickly I wanted to show you is in Illustrator. So Adobe Illustrator, which of course is showing up elsewhere, yet on another monitor. Um, I wanted to show you the really cool tool that they have in their generative, generative model called Firefly. And Firefly essentially um, allows you to create vector, true vector, generated assets, um, which is very useful because vector is the, the type of asset that is very small in file size, but it can be stretched to any size imaginable and not get blurry. All right, so because it's all based on math and not pixels essentially. And so I wanted to show you and run through real quick how you can actually use this to generate vector-based assets that you can then use in your UIs. All right, so here it is. Uh, it's just a little modal basically, and you can issue a prompt here. So you could do something like, let's see, um, airplane, um, isometric, yeah, we'll let it go. And so now it's just going to take a little bit of time. This goes, um, I think even quicker than mid journey at times. And we'll see what it comes up with. It gives you three different variations instead of four like mid journey. And you could do some real cool stuff with it. So here is a airplane vector graphic. And if you click it and then choose one of the other ones, it'll transition it to something like uh, you know, one of the other options. So this, has, this one's cool. I think this shadow's a little bit crazy, but this one is also very good as well. And what's cool is like, say you like this, just copy, oopsie, copy that to your clipboard and then go to Figma and you can literally use that as is. And if you want, you can you know, notice how it's transparent as well. And look how cool that is. Of course, you might have to modify this and these these uh, the vectors just a bit in order to get the desired outcome. Um, and what's also very cool is if you want to experiment with colors, you can actually use their recolor. So if you scroll down, you'll see down here recolor, and it gives you this recolor option up here. And there's a lot of different ways to use this tool as well. But you can let, like just like move things around and notice how it's changing the colors. And there's, you can use color libraries. Um, there's color, colors auto. You can choose the amount of colors. Um, you could do advanced options. You can do generative recolor as well. So you can describe a color palette and mood. And we'll see if it will. We'll actually try this. Let's say um, um, blues and greens, something like that. We'll see. We'll see what it does. I actually haven't played around with this too much. 
But yeah, these are blues and greens essentially. And so it's just a quick way for you to recolor the artwork. Of course, you always take the direct selection tool, then you have access to each of the individual elements. Like you say, okay, I don't want this here. I don't want that there. And start you know modifying things specifically. So those are the few ways that I use personally AI to really assist me when it comes to integrating graphics and different assets and embellishments in UI designs, and it's really helpful. So I'm not worried about it taking my job. It's here to augment my job. It's to enhance it and make it easier so that I don't have to rely on you know concept artists and illustrators so much. It's just quick and easier for me to do that rather than having to wait several weeks and pay thousands of dollars for it. Um, so anyhow, hopefully you enjoyed that. We are actually not going to do a challenge today. Um, we're going to skip a challenge today. We're going to actually go to a new topic tomorrow, and then we'll work on a big challenge. All right. I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye.